Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to do another landscape in charcoal and I'm going to show you how to draw waves using charcoal. I'm going to use charcoal pencils and willow charcoal and this is also going to be a full-length narrated video because I want regular YouTube viewers to have access to some of the content that is normally only available on my Patreon. Let's start. So I have my tools here. I'm going to use charcoal pencils and I'm going to use willow charcoal. Willow charcoal is going to be a very useful tool and I'm going to use it a lot for this drawing. I'm going to be working on this 5 times 8 inches Fabriano sketching paper. And I'm also going to use some blending and erasing tools but I'm going to talk about all of that during the video. Now let me start by shading some of the background using this piece of willow charcoal. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the properties of willow charcoal, what it is and why it is so useful uh, when drawing landscapes like this one. Willow charcoal, just like vine charcoal, is soft natural charcoal that's very easy to blend. It comes in thin sticks like these and it's very easy to modify whatever marks you put down because it doesn't really stick to the surface of the paper. And what that allows you to do, it allows you to blend and modify the amount of value very easily using brushes as well as other blending tools but with brushes in particular you can achieve some very interesting painterly effects almost as though you were using watercolor and when drawing a landscape like this one I find that willow charcoal comes in particularly handy now, what I'm drawing here is I, I'm just drawing some suggestions of waves and I'm kind of putting in a little bit more of this willow charcoal in those areas where, where there will be more shadow. So, these waves, um, they have their crests and their troughs and they almost look like small hills and valleys in the water, but these are very irregular looking hills and valleys and they're ever moving hills and valleys which makes water especially especially wavy splashing water so confusing and difficult to draw but there are ways to simplify it and uh, what I'm doing here in this first phase is I'm just making some suggestions where some of those waves will be where some of those hills will be and um, notice that I'm going to have a larger wave here in the middle and then I'm going to have some smaller ones in the back. So because of our viewpoint, because of the perspective, the waves which are closer to us naturally will appear larger and wider and taller. And they will be getting smaller and smaller as you look further into the distance and also the space between them will be getting uh, shorter and shorter. Uh, but now I'm just going to do a little bit of blending because uh, a good thing about oil charcoal is that you can just move it around very easily, you can make some suggestions and you don't really have to commit to anything. Notice that I also left some lighter spaces which I didn't cover with willow charcoal those are some of the lighter areas where I expect there will be there will be a little bit of splashing water and maybe I will leave some portions of the paper just a little bit lighter so that it would be easier for me to draw that splashing water because charcoal can be erased and willow charcoal especially can be er easily erased but Sometimes when you want something to be really bright or almost white, it's a good idea to put down maybe a little bit less material 
on that particular part of the drawing. But we'll see. Like I said, right now I'm just making some suggestions of shapes where those waves might be. And I'm not really committing to anything specific. Mm, this is sort of an impressionistic stage of this drawing process, even though eventually I plan to refine it and make it look a lot more realistic. But we'll get to that gradually. So you can see how easily I can move this with a brush. Now I'm going to work on top of that a little bit more. I'm going to play around with some smaller shapes here in the back. And I'm going to draw some suggestions of smaller, more distant waves way back at the top of my scene. So like I said, because of our viewpoint, these appear smaller and also they appear uh, more bunched up together uh, because of the perspective. So I'm drawing them closer to one another. And um, you can make their shape pretty irregular because the water is moving all the time so if they're a little bit different from one another that's actually a good thing. And another thing that you want to do with the waves is uh, you want to uh, make shapes that consist of smaller shapes, so smaller waves within those larger waves to suggest constant movement of the water even within those larger waves. So I'm going over some of these uh, waves, uh, larger waves in the mid-ground and the foreground area, which I already established. And maybe going over them a little bit more boldly and trying to see if I can maybe define their shapes a little bit better. But like I said, I'm still just working with willow charcoal, not really committing to a specific shape and laying down some value and putting down some suggestions of shapes. Um, and this amount of value that I'm putting down is important because in order for the splashy white parts of the waves to show up, uh, you need to have a certain amount of value so that you could create contrast in value because those uh, white portions won't show up if the paper is white or almost completely white. So. If you want to, if you want those foamy bits, those splashy bits to stand out, well, then you you need to draw them against something much darker, and the way to do that is usually by either reserving the white space, which can't really work that well here, or by doing a bit of erasing. So I'm going to try to do a combination of both, but it's mostly going to be erasing, where I'm going to be uh, basically doing negative drawing by taking away value in some areas to draw those crests of waves, that top of the wave where, where the wave is uh, splashing or spilling over or maybe clashing against another wave and uh, cause, causing that foamy splashing effect. So you can see as I'm drawing this and as I'm pulling my brush you can see that I'm creating something that already looks like waves, but it could also be interpreted to look as something else. Maybe it looks like mountains or hills, but in a way, like I said, waves are similar to that because you have a bunch of slightly raised shapes like hills and valleys. So in a way, it is similar to um, the type of topography that we see on land. So now I think I have a rough idea where my waves will be, especially the larger ones. But I still have a little bit too much of that lighter value everywhere. So the lighter portions of the waves won't really show up that well. So I'm going to go over this one more time. And you don't have to do it like this. I'm just sort of playing around to show you how this process goes for me. Uh, you could go for something simpler, you could just uh, establish darker value all at once uh, at the very beginning of the drawing process. But this is sort of the way I did it, but it, you don't have to go this way. 
And I, I want to say a few more words about my brushes. And by the way, in this stage is going to look kind of like I'm spoiling everything, but that's the nature of willow charcoal. Uh, you can just uh, play around with it and move it around easily because once you put down those marks with the willow charcoal, that they're not fixed there permanently. I mean, you can easily take away value. You can easily manipulate uh, the shapes and the amount of value. So let me talk a little bit more about brushes. I'm actually going to use two different types of brushes. I normally use flat brushes, so um, that's the thing about their shape. But um, in terms of the quality of the brushes, I tend to use soft, soft synthetic brushes and harder bristle brushes. I'll explain uh, which ones I use when, but for, the, for this first portion of the drying process I actually used soft synthetic brushes. Now let me start explaining what I'm doing here, because I started working with a charcoal pencil. Um, I have a, I'm using the Master's Touch woodless charcoal pencils and I have two grades, the medium and the soft. And for the most part, I'm going to use a medium charcoal pencil because it's going to be dark enough for these waves. So, what I'm doing here is I'm drawing the shadow area of this wave. And I'm just adding some value and adding some darker shapes using that medium charcoal pencil. Now I'm going to do some blending with that soft synthetic brush, which blends very smoothly, very thoroughly. Now the reason why I didn't go in with the with a charcoal pencil first is first because it's too dark and in the initial stage where I'm kind of playing around and trying to see uh, what kind of shapes I can come up with that wouldn't do because it would produce too much texture and it would produce lines which I wouldn't really be able to modify or erase or I wouldn't be able to erase them to uh, such a degree as I can with willow charcoal. And the other thing, uh, the other reason why it's good to put down willow charcoal first is because that uh, charcoal dust from the willow charcoal that you lay down, it allows you to move the uh, charcoal material from your pencils more easily. So it allows you to blend uh, these darker elements more easily because uh, Charcoal pencils are made from compressed charcoal and it tends to stick more to the surface of the paper because it has more binder. It's darker and it sticks more. So uh, when I don't want it to stick quite as much, when I want to be able to move it around more easily, it's a good idea put, to put down some willow charcoal first and then you sort of, you can move that material around more easily and sometimes you can uh, also put down some willow charcoal on top of the charcoal pencils and that will also allow for some smoother blending. So here as you can see I established that first darker shape using my uh, medium charcoal pencil and I added a few of those smaller dark shapes in the background. So now I have something that kind of looks like a wave and I'm going to have to start refining it by using some erasers, which I'll get to eventually. Another blending tool that I can also use a bit to refine the shape of some of, some of these waves in the back is a totillion, but I'm not really going to use that as much as brushes. So now I'm going to start working with erasers. I'm going to use this kneaded eraser a little bit first to lift up a little bit of charcoal here and there but for the most part I'm actually going to use a Dumbo Mono Zero eraser. Dumbo Mono Zero eraser works like a pencil and it's very convenient you use it in the same way that you would a pencil except instead of drawing darker marks you draw lighter marks by taking away value. Now, a kneaded eraser can be used for drawing these splashy parts of the wave, and it works pretty well, but the reason why I like the Tumbo Mono Zero eraser better is because uh, it simply feels more natural to draw these shapes when you have something that you can hold like a pencil, 
and by rubbing it against the paper uh, you also create um, lighter marks with slightly cleaner edges whereas the needle eraser can only do that if you keep reshaping it and creating some really fine um, tips or fine edges on the needle eraser so that you can er erase finer marks so um, a pencil eraser or Tombow Mono Zero eraser is more convenient and I think as I'm using a combination of the two you will see why I think the uh, the Tomb Mono Zero Eraser is superior in this particular case or more, more convenient, easier to use in this case. But the Kneaded Eraser has some advantages of its own because some parts of that splashy water, uh, foamy water, will actually be a little bit darker than white. And in those cases you want to produce um, lighter areas which are more subdued so if you look at this crest of the wave here which i just drew one part of it which has already spilled over is partly in the shadow so even though it's white for me water it needs to be a little bit darker than this white part at the top which is very bright and that's where i find the, the needed racer to be a little bit more useful because by dabbing it you can create those highlights or those lighter areas which are a bit more subdued and which aren't quite as bright because when you dab the needed eraser it lifts up some charcoal but it also brings back some charcoal uh, into the area that you're working on and that way you create slightly uh, softer areas with, where there isn't as much contrast so we have a nice wave with a splashy crest and this is already starting to look like water but that's just the beginning because we're going to draw a lot more waves and this is going to be a full scene now um, here you will also find a few of those um, foamy streaks on the side and on the bottom of the wave sometimes they will be a little bit more vis visible sometimes a little bit less here I don't really need to define them that much I'm just gonna make some suggestions of them and sort of leave it like that let me say a few more words about the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser so and the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser is uh, similar to a mechanical pencil but instead of a graphite lead inside you have a rubber eraser and it allows for some precision erasing it's a very convenient tool now some people complained to me that they can't find it or that they can't buy it locally or that it's too complicated or too expensive for them to order them online uh, and have them shipped from abroad if you have some kind of an equivalent like for example any type of pencil eraser like for example paper castell eraser in a pencil or a Kohinoor eraser in a pencil that will actually do just as well as this one so I've used both the Kohinoor uh, eraser and a pencil in many of my drawings and I use the Tombow Mono Zero eraser and I can tell you that there's virtually no difference in what you can do with these two tools so don't worry about it if you have some sort of a pencil eraser you can pull it off and you can draw these uh, small splashy details just as easy now if you can't get either of these two well uh, then you'll probably be able to find some kind of a kneaded eraser and a kneaded eraser will um, it'll be a little bit more challenging to work with it but you can still uh, you can still achieve very similar effects except that uh, it'll take a little bit more practice and like I said it's less convenient to use now I'm drawing another another wave here and adding more value to its side 
to the part of the wave which is raised up and which is um, kind of facing away from the light source and I'm making it a bit darker and again I'm using a medium charcoal pencil for this so I want to stack these waves one in front of the other so that I can show this movement of the water to the viewer but I also want to keep in mind that generally the ones which are further back are going to be getting smaller and smaller sometimes this can be a little bit confusing because uh, in some places these shapes kind of overlap and merge into one but this randomness will actually make things more realistic and it will work to your advantage and ultimately when you finish like a scene like this you will see that it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you capture the general idea it will look good enough that's one of the things that I was always fascinated by when I was a beginner and when I looked at these realistic drawings of much more experienced artists I always wondered how they are able to pay attention to such tiny details but later as I worked and as I practiced I realized that a lot of it are just happy accidents that the artist just leaves there because they look good to them or they modify them slightly and you know there are a lot of things that they don't really have to work that hard on a lot of it just happens when you stick to the general idea when you know the general principles the general rules and if you understand some of the general rules or the like the general nature of what you're drawing the general shape of what you're drawing and if you understand the general rules when it comes to um, shapes value uh, the way that objects interact with the light source and things like that and you apply that you will end up with something that looks realistic without actually putting in that much effort and without having to worry about every single detail. So you can see that here I managed to define some of the smaller waves in the distance and now we're getting that feeling of depth and now we're getting that three-dimensional look because we can feel like the waves here in the middle are closer to our viewpoint than the smaller ones which are further away. I keep using my brushes for blending and I keep using to, um, charcoal pencils and willow charcoal for adding value where needed. Now I like to use two types of brushes. I mentioned that at the beginning and now I'm going to draw a few more uh, highlights or rather splashy parts of those waves using my eraser and while I'm doing that let me get back to talking about the brushes because this is very important or it's somewhat important I suppose um, I, in addition to these soft synthetic brushes which tend to blend more smoothly I also use harder bristle brushes now they both blend pretty well with charcoal but what I've noticed very early when I worked with these harder bristle brushes was that they also tend to push the material harder into the paper when you when you use more pressure whereas that doesn't seem to happen as much uh, when you use these softer brushes so uh, what that allows me to do when I use these harder brushes it allows me to control how much of this material I want to push into the paper so let's say that I'm using willow charcoal and willow charcoal just sort of lies on top of the paper and you can move it around as though you were painting so if I create a darker shape if I use that softer brush and blend it it's mostly going to be moved around and um, sort of blended into the background not much of it is going to remain and I'll have to re keep reapplying and 
I won't be getting there in terms of the amount of value. However, if I use a harder brush, I can work over that uh, mark which I made with a piece of willow charcoal and it will actually create a darker shape by pushing in that willow charcoal into the paper a little bit harder. So I can use that in combination with these charcoal pencils because the thing is that I don't really want to use charcoal pencils that much here when I'm drawing the surface of the water because charcoal pencils tend to create a little bit, a little bit more texture. Uh, a little bit more of those tiny marks that suggest some kind of smaller shape, some kind of texture. And sometimes if you want something smoother, uh, you may want to use willow charcoal, but then you push that willow charcoal in using a harder brush. So these are just some r really tiny and honestly obscure tricks that I've learned simply by experimenting with different types of blending tools. And if you uh, want to know more about different types of blending tools and how you use them, I have a video on that, uh, which I've done years ago, and I'll put the link in the end screen if you want to check it out. So I'm going to add more value to this wave here because I want this foamy part to stand out even more. So I'm going to add more value here. And you can see how willow charcoal creates these darker marks and I, when I want them to remain dark I just grab this harder brush and you can see that as I'm pushing it in it's scratchy it's it sound it, it definitely sounds more scratchy and then as I want to soften it a little bit more and create a smoother transition I just switch to this softer brush so it's just a trick that I like to use when I have different types of brushes available. Now I know that some people will ask me about the brands of the brushes. I have no idea what the brand is. I just buy the ones that I can find locally. And like I said, um, whatever you find, whatever you can buy locally, you will just have to experiment with that. And um, give it enough practice, you'll find a way to make it work because when I started drawing, when I started drawing more seriously, I did uh, worry about whether I have all the right tools, but at the same time, I knew that, uh, I knew that it's not the tools that ultimately I needed to increase my level of skill and my understanding of the things that I draw. And as I got better, it seemed like even though I got some of the better tools or more interesting tools, it seemed like they weren't really that important anymore because I could make it work with, with other tools as well. So I'm drawing some more of those um, white foamy streaks or streams, whatever you want to call them, that form when the waves is uh, when the wave is raising and spilling over. Um, and I'm just going to make some lighter marks here in the background just to try to make some of these waves up here a bit more three-dimensional maybe. Maybe add a few suggestions of maybe some uh, sparkly reflecting water or some splashing water, it doesn't really matter. But you can see that I'm gradually approaching the mid-ground area where I'm gonna where I'm gonna draw this larger wave. I don't have a reference photo for you this time uh, because honestly, I I just uh, looked at some paintings of waves and decided to create something of my own. Um, so I'm just going to draw the kind of shapes that I like. So 
So again, I made some darker marks here, and now I'm pushing them in a bit using this harder brush. And you can see that as I'm using this harder brush, it does sound a little bit more scratchy, and these darker areas do remain a bit darker. I'm still moving around the material fairly easily because after all it's willow charcoal, it, just like vine charcoal, it's very easy to move. But um, with this harder brush, I seem to be getting slightly darker shapes or, and, I, and it uh, seems to stick a bit more. So I'm still refining some of the surrounding waves. These surrounding waves, I, I, I want to... I want to get those done before I move on to this main wave. I call it the main wave because uh, it'll be the part of the scene which will draw the focus of the viewer, hopefully. And in order for those uh, lighter parts of the wave to show up, I need to prepare the train by putting in enough value around those around those lighter places. So now I'm starting to work with a Tombow Mono Zero eraser and you can see how easy it is for me to create these suggestions of splashing water. I'm just dragging this pencil eraser and occasionally I just uh, draw a few lighter dots kind of flying up like the water is splashing up or to the side and I can also create some suggestions of some smaller waves within that larger wave so I'm kind of breaking up that larger shape into slightly smaller shapes, smaller waves and now I'm dabbing with a kneaded eraser to uh, create those um, uh, slightly darker white for me parts because not all of it is going to be completely white not all of it is going to be completely white as I already explained because some of it is um, at the very top of that crest of the wave and therefore catching more light from above and the rest of it maybe is going to be a little bit darker but I'm going to go along the along this ridge of that wave along, along that crest of the wave drawing those lighter splashy bits and I'm going to try to make them look as natural as possible but there's really not much to it because I'm just sort of dragging the pencil and <laughs> creating something that kind of looks like splashing water and you, you can see how easy it is for me when I have something that I can hold like a pencil because I can control the shapes, I can control the pressure um, I can control the lines that I'm making with a kneaded eraser I wouldn't really be able to do that because the kneaded eraser is softer, it doesn't erase such clean sharp marks and I would have to keep uh, kneading it and reshaping it and I would have to and I would just be, uh, it would be creating slightly um, blurrier shapes. It would be muddying things a bit. So if I wanted to achieve a similar effect with an needed eraser, I would have to work much, much slower with a lot more patience. And I'm not really sure if I would be able to produce um, the same effect. Maybe I would, but like I said, with a lot more patience. Now here at the bottom of that wave, I'm going to add a bit more value using a charcoal pencil. The wave needs to be, this base of the wave needs to be much darker. First, because it's at the bottom and facing away from the light source. And second, because the water is kind of uh, deeper and, um, how should I put it, thicker there because uh, at the top of this wave here and in, in the middle just under those flashy uh, 
or just under those splashy parts rather, uh, the wave is thinner and therefore more translucent and it's also splashing up and it's facing the light source so the light is breaking through that part of the wave and that's why I need to make it lighter and this contrast in value where that part of the wave is much lighter than the base of the wave is actually going to be what's probably the key thing about this wave and the key thing that's going to make the wave look realistic to the viewer that translucent part of the wave if I were working in colors I would have to use a lighter color plus I would use a slightly more greenish more turquoise tone there to produce that effect and you can see that I'm using the same approach with some of these waves at the back by making the top a little bit lighter and here I did that simply by dabbing on them with a clean brush because sometimes you don't have to use an eraser when you want to create areas of lighter value you can actually go back and work over them with a brush but you clean your brush first and then the brush instead of blending it kind of lifts up a little bit of the material making that portion of the paper a bit lighter so now I'm going to add a few more smaller waves here behind this wave and then, and then I'm going to finish the rest of the crest of this large wave in the middle. And as I'm pulling these marks with a piece of willow chuck one, <clears throat> you know, I'm trying to create shapes to imitate the shape of waves. It'll get blurred and modified as I blend, but some of those suggestions of those wavy shapes still remain. <clears throat> and the reason why it works is because um, the movement of the water is like that. It's full of those smaller shapes. So if you just uh, stack a lot of these uh, smaller shapes, it will still uh, look. Uh, it will. It will still uh, end up with something that looks like ripples in the water, because even within those larger waves, you have a lot of smaller shapes, smaller ripples. I'm going to do a little bit more work with a Tombow Mono Zero Eraser because, like I said, I need to finish the rest of the wave here in the middle where the wave is spilling over and splashing at the top, at the top of this crest of the wave. In addition to that, I'm also going to add some of that splashy water in the background as well. I'm going to add some random lighter marks here and there. The trick is not to overdo it, but just add a little bit of that here and there in between those larger waves because if you try to draw every single wave and uh, it will actually look pretty ugly and it won't look very realistic so less is more I suppose um, this part here at the top is a little bit too light so I'm gonna add a few more darker shapes to it and blend them in with a harder brush and then with a softer brush I really do like this uh, lighter portion of the wave in the middle. That's probably one of the best things I've achieved here in this drawing so far. <clears throat> to complete the scene, I mean, I'm not still close to being finished, but th this will be one of the more, more important elements in the scene. I'm going to have some darker rocks here 
in the lower right corner. And the reason why these rocks are an important element is because they will create a lot of tension between that darker value of the rocks in the foreground and the lighter waves in the background. That will help me uh, create even more depth in my scene. And here I'm actually going to use a little bit of soft charcoal pencil, but first I'm going to do most of the work with a medium charcoal pencil. Because the medium charcoal pencil obviously is much, much darker than willow charcoal when you press a little bit harder with it. And I can still designate where those darker shapes or darker areas will be, and those areas which are darker will be the ones where uh, where the rock is facing away from the light source. The light source is coming from above, so the sides will generally be a bit darker, and also some of these cracks will be a bit darker because they're deeper in the shadow. So here, as you can see, I added a touch of soft charcoal pencil. The, the longer one is the soft charcoal pencil, the shorter one on the right is the medium charcoal pencil and now I'm going to do some blending these areas at the top will be a bit lighter and I will maybe even uh, lift up a little bit of value I'll do a bit of erasing later once I'm happy with the overall shape and the overall amount of, amount of value. I'm not going to draw a lot more rocks here. Um, I don't really want to draw the whole rocky shore here. I want the, the focus of the drawing to be on these waves. I think that the rocks here really complete the scene and uh, the waves themselves wouldn't be as interesting without them, or maybe they wouldn't be as convincing without them. I'm going to draw some more splashing water here as the extension of that wave and also around those rocks because maybe some, some waves are splashing against those rocks. And you can see that I'm really digging in with this Dumbo Mono Zero Eraser because I'm trying to produce some lighter marks but in those areas where I want slightly less light marks I can just pull back on the pressure and create uh, slightly more muddied marks which aren't quite as light or aren't completely white. So I think I think the shape of this uh, large wave here in the middle looks pretty good. And you can see how these random touches of lighter value here and there to indicate that uh, splashing water, foamy water here and there, as long as you use it sparingly, how they really add to the overall impre impression of wavy. Uh, water. I can add some of those smaller marks in the back as well. This contrast is, is very nice. So I've done most of what I wanted to do with these waves. I'm just going to add a little bit more shadow here under the splashing water because uh, I, I need more contrast there and I want to explain to the viewer that the that the wave is kind of breaking and spilling over in that area. And I also want to add a lot more darker value here at the bottom of the wave to create more contrast between that translucent lighter part of the wave and the bottom or the base of the wave.
I also need a bit of shadow here. I want these rocks to be casting some shadow onto the water here. And I just added a bit of willow charcoal and then smudged it with some with a brush. And it looks pretty much like a shadow. It needs to have a fairly clean, fairly defined edge. So I'm gonna kind of leave it like that. It looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do some more blending on this darker area here and here I'm going to switch to a softer brush because I added some charcoal pencil here and that can potentially create an ugly texture. I want to soften that texture, I want to make that look smoother. So I'm just going to keep dragging my brush over it. And like I said I mostly use flat brushes but the width of the tip varies. Sometimes it's a very narrow tip, sometimes it's a little bit wider. That depends on what I'm working on. So I just need to make this a bit smoother. I'm just gonna work on it with a brush. But another thing that I can try to do with this brush is I can uh, try to lift up a bit of charcoal by cleaning up my brush every now and then and then maybe try to produce those lighter marks like those lighter streaks of water foamy streaks of water but if that doesn't work or if it's not light enough I can go in with my eraser and I can play around with that but the trouble here is that I think uh, these even though I do like the shapes that I'm producing with the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser, uh, first a little bit they're a little bit too thin. That's one problem, but that could be taken care of. But the other problem is that they're a little bit too light. You see, this whole part of the wave needs to be in the shadow. So even these lighter foamy bits, uh, which are in the shadow area, they also need to be darker. So. I'm actually going to have to subdue them quite a bit using my brushes and I can't leave them that light because in my opinion it um, it's not that it won't look realistic it, it will remind people of something they see in a wave but the problem is that they kind of spoil the general shape of the wave because they spoil that relationship between the shadow part of the wave and the lighter part of the wave and I don't really want that because I think the larger relationship is far more important so I'm softening these a little bit with a brush and I'm hoping that Uh, that I can knock them back a little bit in terms of value while still retaining some of those lighter shapes. And I can just blur some of them a little bit because they need they don't really need to be super defined. They don't need to be super well defined. As long as I have that contrast between the top of the wave near the crest and the, uh, the bottom or the base of the wave, that's the most important thing for me. And then um, this uh, base of the wave needs to gradually become lighter or, or maybe needs to suddenly become more uh, a bit lighter because uh, that's where the shadow ends and this lighter flat portion begins because I want to have waves which are washing up on the shore so this area in the foreground is going to be flatter there's not going to be any larger waves now 
just a, uh, just a flatter area of foamy water because these rocks are on the shore so this is the last of those larger waves which are crashing against the shore or washing up on the shore and then like I said I'm going to have that flat foamy area at the bottom and here and there I'm going to add some darker shapes in the shadow area of the wave and I'm going to soften that bottom with some brushes uh, here in this foreground area I'm going to make some darker marks and what these darker marks are supposed to mean is they're just parts of the water which can be seen through the uh, through the foamy foamy bits and I know that right now they don't make a lot of sense but once I soften them a little bit and modify, mod modify their shapes a, a bit I think they will start to make a bit more sense in this context or at least I hope they will I also need to add a few darker marks in that shadow area uh, the, the shadow from the rock so now I'm gonna work on them a little bit with a brush I need, I need them to remain darker so I'm gonna hit them with this uh, harder bristle brush want to establish some of those darker areas but I'm going to work on top of that with an eraser so don't worry um, this lower part of the of the scene is going to be quite a bit lighter because it's uh, lighter uh, foamy water plus it's facing up it's exposed to the light source so it's definitely going to be a lot lighter for the most part I'm just going to add a bit more value here at the bottom with some willow charcoal. So this is the second full length video in a row. The next one is going to be a bit shorter. I just wanted to give uh, my YouTube viewers a sample of the type of content that is available only on Patreon because normally people use YouTube only to attract people to their Patreon and a lot of artists uh, from what I see provide very very little content very little free content on YouTube I honestly don't really like that uh, I like the idea of uh, providing a little bit more free content on YouTube because I've learned a lot from free materials available online and I want to be able to maybe give some of it back and uh, help out some of the younger artists out there but like I said if you want more content if you want to see more videos like like these like these two you should check out my Patreon because I have hundreds of full-length narrated videos where you, where you can observe the what the drawing process looks like in real time and uh, you can uh, watch the video at a much slower pace so I made this part a little bit lighter now I'm just gonna soften some of these marks a little bit because I did produce some ugly lines and I want to make this shadow here a bit darker I'm just working with the uh, with the Tombow Mono Zero eraser on this uh, on this foreground area. 
adding those uh, lighter, lighter marks until I'm happy with how light that part of the foreground looks because it needs to be lighter not just because of the foamy water but because it's uh, exposed to the light source and the shadow of that wave ends just under the just around the bottom of that wave so I think I'm pretty much done here I'm going to put my signature in the lower left corner. So there it is. This is the finished drawing. I hope you enjoyed the drawing process. And don't forget to check out my other videos. I have lots of other landscape drawings, whether you like charcoal or colored pencil or graphite pencil, so maybe you'll find something you like. Uh, thanks for watching once again, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.